What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Spring football for the Arkansas Razors backs is up next. This is kind of what I like to call the Arkansas sports cluster because you got baseball in full swing, obviously. Basketball maybe looking like it's starting to turn a corner. It's probably a little too little too late. We're about to end the recruiting dead period. Also, we're going to talk to Danny West about that. And then, of course, spring football gearing up here as well. All that and more on today's episode of Hog Sports Live. Plenty of ways to watch and listen to the show. You can always tune in on YouTube where we're streaming live. Be sure to su- subscribe to the channel and set it to where you're alerted anytime we upload new videos. Also available on Facebook. Be one of 90,000 Razorback fans to join us on our Facebook channel. We all put all of our free content on Facebook live. Uh, sign up for the VIP subscription at hogsports.com. If you want to read our VIP articles, just $1 right now for your first month at hawgsports.com. Come check out what we got going on at the Razor's Edge VIP forum. And also available on Apple Podcasts where uh, we're Arkansas's highest rated show and we'd love to have a five star review from you if you haven't done so in a while it's actually been a little bit since we've had a review we're almost at a thousand uh, ratings right now but we'd love to have a rating and a review if you've got a little bit of time to do that also Spotify as well uh, and we're available on Google Podcasts anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast again sign up at Hog Sports H-A-W-G Sports.com for all of your Razorback uh, spring football recruiting baseball basketball news Speaking of baseball, it was an interesting weekend in Arlington. Arkansas beat Oregon State 5-4, where Hagen Smith had 17 strikeouts in that one. Um, didn't get the win, obviously. Oregon State came back, but uh, an incredible performance. Tied a school record with 17 strikeouts. Then against Oklahoma State in a losing effort in 14 innings, Arkansas had 25 strikeouts, which is a school record. Pretty incredible stuff by the pitching staff. Almost let it slip away on Sunday against Michigan. Um, I don't know if I mentioned Arkansas obviously lost to Oklahoma State 2-1 but uh, against Michigan almost let it slip away there uh, late in that one but ended up winning 4-3 um, Hagan Smith by the way SEC pitcher of the week Colin Fisher SEC co-freshman of the week so nice to see a little bit of uh, recognition for those guys and then uh, Arkansas faces Grambling on Tuesday, February 27th. That game's at 3 p.m. So this is the first midweek game of the year. And then they've got a weekend series against Murray State Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's baseball. Speaking of uh, Player of the Week honors, Caleb Battle also got uh, SEC Player of the Week for basketball. Battle has actually had a pretty outstanding little stretch here. So, Battle has gone – these are the last few games for him. He went for 42, which is, I believe, the seventh most all-time. I think only like 13 players in Arkansas history have gone for 42. So, he went for 42, one of only two players uh, to score 42 this year in SEC play. The other was Wade Taylor, who did it against Arkansas, if you remember the game that – that uh, Tremont Mark scored at the very end of the game. He also had – Mark had 35 in that one. That was that was an exciting one. But what's, what really jumps out, 14 of 14 on free throws. He was 11 of 15 from the floor. But 14 of 14 on free throws and no turnovers in 28 – excuse me, in 38 minutes. Six rebounds also. The game before, he had 15. And he had 18 before that in the loss to Mississippi State. So, he's gone for 18 15 and 42, averaging 25 points a game over his last three. This is – this is not the Caliph battle that I thought we would see early in the season. This is better than what I thought we'd see. But he went for 21 against Alcorn State. Gardner-Webb, he went for 21. I mean, if you remember, he got off to a pretty impressive start in the season. A few games later, he went for 21 against Memphis. A couple games after that, went for 21 against Duke. Seemed like that was his ceiling. 25 against Furman. 18 against um, uh, Abilene Christian. And then it just really dropped off. I mean, he was single figures in all but two games against Kentucky and, and Ole Miss before uh, this latest stretch there. So it's good to see him going, but uh, obviously it feels like a little too little too late for the basketball team. They've got to get out of that first week, uh, that first uh, game, I should say, uh, for the SEC tournament if they're going to have a chance to make some noise there and possibly win it. They're not going to they're not going to win five games in five days. Obviously, nobody's going to do that. So, congrats to Caleb Battle, Hagen Smith, Colin Fisher, getting some good recognition. 
What's next here for Arkansas? They got Vanderbilt at 8 o'clock in Bud Walton Arena. That game will be on SEC Network. Vanderbilt has won, what, seven games? Uh, they're not very good. So this is, should be a chance for Arkansas to get a winning streak together. 78-71 at Texas A&M, 88-73 against Missouri and Fayetteville, and then against Vanderbilt um, tomorrow night. Today's Monday, by the way, for those maybe watching later. So after that, I mean, it, it obviously gets tough. You've got to go at Lexington to face Kentucky. You get Bud Walton, excuse me, you get LSU and Bud Walton Arena on Wednesday, March 6th. And then on Saturday, March 9th, you wrap the whole thing up at Alabama. I mean, like if we're talking about Arkansas getting back into the mix, of the, into the discussion again, right? <laughs> Which, I mean, I'm just saying, just like an, an, an extreme hypothetical here, then you need to win out and make some serious, serious noise in the SEC tournament. I mean, I'm kind of thinking like maybe this team can go to the NIT, you know, if, if things get right. But uh, the NCAA tournament feels like a bit of a pipe dream, obviously. I mean, we've, we've already settled ourselves down on that idea, right? But that's what it would take. I mean, obviously winning out, bidding Kentucky, LSU, Alabama, and then making some noise in the NCAA tournament. So I'm not saying that, so don't start putting words in my mouth. I'm just – just laying out the hypothetical of what it would take. Trevin Brazil got back on the floor. That was nice. He only he only played four minutes, and just I think his only stat was a personal foul. But it was good to see him get out there, just for the fact that um, you know I think a lot of you are probably like me, not thinking that you know this is you know thinking this the old Miss game was probably the last time we saw him in a Razorback uniform that was 7 games ago i think so it's been a while since he's been out there obviously Keon Minifield is day to day still Jalen Graham is sometime within these next two games before this past game Musselman said he expects to see Trevin Brazil and Jalen Graham sometime in the next 3 games so that was uh, a game ago so sometime in these next two games maybe we'll see Jalen Graham get back out there would it disrupt things to have Trevin Brazil out there? Musselman talked about that a little bit. Is that a, is that, uh, is it too late to get him in? Why the the team is kind of starting to to come together and gel a little bit, and um, you know, again, it, it feels like a little bit too little, too late. But uh, you know, can can Trevin Brazil come back and and help this team, or is it better to go with kind of what they had? I mean, lately they've kind of, I mean, they've been forced to just kind of go with a few guys here and there, so. You know, it brings up some interesting questions, too, like, you know, who might come back next year for Arkansas basketball? I mean, we're always looking ahead, aren't we? Who might come back? You, know, you want to look at the roster real quick? Let's see. I, know, I think a lot of people are probably confused about who has eligibility remaining and who doesn't. Uh, Caleb Battle has another year after this if he wants to come back. He redshirted um, – in the 21-22 season at Temple. So he could possibly come back if he wants to. Uh, Keon Minifield is just a sophomore this year. He could come back. Trevor Brazil's a redshirt sophomore. He could. I think a lot of people think that he'll probably take things to the next level. But even he's been injured again all year. Maybe he wants to come back and improve something. Uh, L. Ellis, this is his last year, so he's done. Uh, D Devo Davis could come back. He's a senior, so he would have a super senior year available to him if he wanted to. Joseph Pinion's just a sophomore. He could come back. Layden Blocker, just a freshman, could come back. Dennis J. Harris, um, He's done. He's he's out of eligibility after this year. Chandler Lawson. Lawson is done also. There's been some speculation that he could come back, but the year I believe he was injured, I think he played too many games. So uh, Lawson is done after this year. Bayfall, just a freshman, he could come back. Jalen Graham, uh, this would be his last year also. Tremont Marks, just a junior, he could come back. He could come back for two more years, I think, yeah. 2020 was his first, so he could come back. Uh, Makai Mitchell. Makai is interesting. I haven't gotten – let me see if I've gotten clarification because I've, I've asked about this. Let's see. So Makai's deal is he was listed as – no, don't have anything on that. So Makai uh, was listed as a guy that has one year of eligibility, if you look on his bio. But if you go back to – Here's where I'm confused a little bit. If you go back to 2020, 2021, which is also the forgiven COVID year, maybe that has something to do with it. He only played in seven games. 
Uh, they played 25 games that, that year, so that's like 28% of the game. So the rule is if you play in 30% of the games or fewer with a season-ending injury, which you had a season-ending knee injury, then you can, can have a medical redshirt. But he's never listed as having applied for a medical redshirt. Uh, the difference, like with Caleb Battle, is Caleb is listed as having a medical. He's listed as a red shirt senior, so he has a Caleb Battle has a COVID year, and it would appear that possibly if he tried to apply for it, then maybe Mitchell would. But he's listed right now as saying uh, just has one year of eligibility remaining. So, and maybe that has something to do with the way the COVID year is set up, where you maybe you couldn't apply for a medical hardship or something. If it happened during the COVID year, I'm, I'm not sure exactly. But anyway, Jeremiah Davenport is the only guy on scholarship that we didn't talk about, and uh, he is in his final year also. He has no more eligibility left. So just to recap, Caleb Battle could come back, Keon Minifield, Trevin Brazil, Devo, Pinion, Blocker, Fall, Mark, and possibly – possibly Mitchell but looking probably unlikely and you know with some of those things too with bat you don't you don't see many six-year basketball players you know like I mentioned Caleb Battle could probably come back I don't think he will I think we're probably going to be looking at quite a different roster maybe the better question is who do you think could come back I think Blocker and Fall the freshman um, then you know maybe Battle I, I just you just don't see many six-year guys you know in in basketball it's more like you know the younger you are the more value you have because you you're viewed as a guy has a high ceiling but if you have no eligibility to return no option to return to college and you know that's kind of diminished that that narrative so uh keon menafield would be another guy i would i would think possibly uh, could come back so if, like if i were betting on it i would say you know fall blocker menafield and that might be it just kind of the way, you know, when you look at people's playing time right now and, you know, their age and all that stuff. So it might be those guys, and then you just have the two recruits, and then you got to build the rest of the roster through the portal. NFL Combine starts today, technically. It's just checking in. It's actually not going to get going until, like, Thursday. But today, defensive linemen and linebackers registered – go through orientation, team interviews, and things like that. Um, and then they have some defensive backs and tight ends uh, as early arrivals. Actually, excuse me, uh, defensive linemen and linebackers arrived yesterday. Defensive backs and tight ends arrived today. Uh, defensive linemen and linebackers today, this is Monday, February 26th, are going through registration and orientation and team interviews. So they have things like medical exams, uh, ortho exams, media interviews, all that stuff before things really get going on Thursday. So you got defensive linemen and linebackers, measurements and on-field workouts. And then, so this, I'll just kind of break down how it goes for each group that, that reports. So uh, defensive end, defensive linemen, linebackers, measurements, on-field workouts on Thursday. Um, and then on Friday, those guys will do the bench press and, and they also do some more interviews. I like that they do the bench press the day after. Uh, for a while, they had it scheduled the day of all these on-field testings, and no big surprise, nobody was doing bench press. So bump it back to the next day I think is a good thing. Not that, you know, a lot of times players will just work on their speed and, you know, then they'll come back and do a bench press at their, uh, at their school's uh, pro day. So, you know, it's just kind of how it goes. But uh, so you got defensive backs and tight ends doing on field workouts on Fridays, quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs um, on Saturday, and then offensive linemen, place kickers, and special teams on Sunday. And that's it. And the offensive linemen, place kickers, special team do bench press on Monday, March 4th, and the whole thing is wrapped up. So that's kind of how things are set up there the guys that are going there for Arkansas Trajan Jeffcoat who checked in yesterday Dwight McLaughlin who checked in today or will check in today and then you've got Bo Lemmer and Brady Latham and then Cam Little also so five Razorbacks invited off a team that won five games excuse me four games just four games uh that's that's a quite a good number for um you know 
a team that didn't win a whole lot last season. So just to reiterate, it's Brady Latham and Bo Lemmer, Trajan Jeffco, Dwight McLaughlin, and Cam Little going to the NFL Combine. There was some discussion that Georgia was leaning towards hiring Jimmy Smith as the team's next running back coach, Arkansas running back coach. Um, in fact, uh, Kip Adams over at our Georgia site was saying that he feels like he could be the favorite to win. You know, my my thought kind of on it was, you know, I think Jimmy's a, a very good running backs coach and a guy that, you know, could have easily had that job. But, you know, does Georgia need a guy that has a strong Georgia ties? Because Jimmy was, you know, you know, legendary high school coach there. No, probably not. They could probably use a guy maybe with strong Florida ties or something like that. But anyway, uh, they're set to hire uh, ex-Georgia high school coach, <laughs> as I say that. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, Georgia Tech wide receivers coach Josh Crawford, who's the ex-Georgia high school coach also. So that's where, uh, according to Matt Zenitz with 24-7 Sports, that's where they are hired or, or headed uh, to hire him. So uh, looks like – Jimmy Smith will be remaining at Arkansas. And that's good because we are 10 days away from spring football. 10 days away. And that's official now. As I reported a while back, I reported this a a good bit back, but um, that is official March 7th start date for spring football. They'll hold 15 practices, which will be culminated in the red-white game on April 13th. Again, that is uh, an an official date. I've kind of broken this down to how how you can uh, expect things to play out. Let's see. All right, so this is based on last year's schedule and some of the things I've heard. Um, You're looking at Thursday, March 7th, and then probably Friday, March 8th, Sunday, March 10th, Tuesday, March 12th, and Thursday, March 14th and then they'll let them go to spring break after that, and then they'll come back and they'll go every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, all the way up to the last week where they'll go Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then hold the red and white game on April 13th on Saturday. And that'll get them to 15 practices. Practices are expected to be early this year. So, you know, looking at – uh, except for except for Saturday. So Tuesday, Thursday practices will likely be in the morning, kind of like they did fall camp this year. Pittman really liked that. Uh, and then you're looking on Saturdays, 8.55, 10, 10 or noon is when practices were last year. And I believe the red-white game was at noon. Was it noon or one last year? But it will be early, early afternoon regardless. And, okay. All right. Let's go to Danny West. For those of you who don't follow Danny West, you can follow him at Danny West 24-7, Hog Sports Recruiting Analyst. Been with us for a long time, a dozen years or more. I don't know, I kind of lost count on how long Danny's been with us, but does a great job. Nobody covers Razorback recruiting like Danny West. Danny, how you doing, man? How's it going, brother? It's going, man. Uh, sitting here watching you, I had to turn the volume down before I answered. How's it going your way? It's going good. It's going good. We finally got our squirrel situation figured out. We found out where they're going in. I've trapped two of those buggers and drove them that off about you. 10 miles. Yeah. All right, so explain that to me before we get into recruiting. Can they really come back for 10 miles? That's what I, I've read stuff that said three miles. I said, read some stuff that said seven. And I read some stuff that said 10. So just to – I went 10.4 miles away. I set my odometer at it. I mean, I guess it's not a straight beeline, 10.4 miles. So I'm probably somewhere in the seven-mile range. But uh, yeah. I just didn't want to risk it anymore. So, um, yeah, those squirrels have declared war. But they were they were up there in the attic, and I, I, I got three live traps set up and, um, yeah, and caught them. So the caught two of them. old trapper, you. Yeah, I'm an old trapper. Yeah. How are things going with you? It's it's good. It's been busy. You know, the month of February for me is kind of a time to catch up on all the stuff that mm-hmm. really doesn't get done since late November when, yeah. it, when it really heats up. So personally, it's been a busy month for me, but man, I can feel it. Uh, it's warming up for recruiting. And, uh, you know, we're sitting here a week away now from the dead period 
being over and obviously that rolls into a quiet period which mm-hmm. allows recruits to get back on campus and sitting here messaging guys over the last 24 48 hours and got several we can talk about today that plan on checking out the Razorbacks starting next weekend yeah yeah well you've got uh I mean you got six days Danny till the dead period yeah. ends in, the, in its contact period let's talk about some of the guys coming in um Google Chrome has frozen on me for some reason that's all so. right I'll take it from here buddy I all got right. you covered Good deal. Branson Hickman this is a guy we've talked about yep. I know you interviewed him a while back the SMU transfer offensive lineman center and uh obviously Arkansas went out and got Addison Nichols from Tennessee, a guy they feel that maybe can slide into that center role. I guess we'll start to find out here in about 10 days what that looks like. But Branson Hickman, I guess you're getting the first official visit. And, um, you know, this is a guy that could be could be the final missing piece for that offensive line that we've talked so much about mm-hmm. and, and rightfully so over the last six months or so. But um, I, I think they feel good about it. But, you know, going back to your story with, with Hickman, uh, sounds like a guy that maybe wants to take his time a little bit, not rush into a decision. But at the same time, I'm hearing on Arkansas's end, they've got a lot going in their uh, favor yeah. for this one in particular. So, you know, nothing surprises me with the transfer visitors. But, man, if they could lock this one up uh, starting next, I guess that'll be next Friday, March yeah. 8th, when he's set to arrive. So if they could wrap that one up quickly, I think that would be their best-case scenario. I'm not not predicting that to happen Again, sounds like a guy who may want to take some visits, but he's a big one and uh, one that they feel pretty strongly about. But um, in addition to Branson coming in next weekend, also talked to some 2025 high school recruits, which, of course, uh, they're juniors right now. They'll be seniors this coming fall. And uh, Ronnie Fouch, your new wide receivers coach, uh, Razorback fans for Arkansas, he's, he's been really active in recruiting. I've been impressed with the new hires so far when you mm-hmm. talk about coach Fouch and, and coach Mateos, just in terms of, it's kind of different stories, but with Mateos getting in so early in early December, kind of a no brainer type hire, <clears throat> excuse me. Of course he, that allowed him to get right to work. And he did, he put it uh, together quite a impressive uh, visit list starting in December with that first junior day. I want to say December 9th. Then of course they went on a run there with three straight weekends in January, and if I had to give some type of award for you know most impressive position group uh, that that brought in and attracted the top visitors, it would be Mateo. So I, I mm-hmm. felt like he's gotten off to a strong start. And now you transition to Ronnie Fouch, who got a little bit of a later start. Most of the guys I'm hearing from are wide receivers right now, and most of them have been offered or re-offered by Fouch in the last. I don't know, three weeks, let's say. Mm -hmm. So we could talk about a couple of those. Jacob Washington is a guy who was offered, like I said, a few weeks ago um, out of Archbishop Shaw down in Marrero, Louisiana, uh, a place we're all familiar with. We've seen Arkansas dip into there, South Louisiana several times, especially under Coach B. So Jacob is a 6'3 wide receiver. He's got a a healthy offer list, really impressive kid, and – and I think he's going to be one that we're going to be talking about for a while. Six three one eighty. Like I said, he's got Miami, Ole Miss, Mississippi State. So quite a bit of competition there. And then another one I heard from yesterday, Trey, from Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, Saginaw High School, is Jackson Gonzalez. Again, a recently offered wide receiver. I uh, forget his offer list. You have to forgive me. Don't have it pulled up yet, but. Um, uh, 6'4", 180 is what we have him. He mm-hmm. says he's 6'5". I guess we'll find out uh, next week, March 8th. Both of those guys are expected to be on campus. And Gonzalez also has some SEC flavor on that offer list. He's got Missouri, um, Arkansas, of course, now. Virginia Tech's up there for him. Nebraska has offered Arizona State. So, you know, uh, some of these guys, they may be three stars. A couple of them may be unranked so far, but the offers are there, and that's always a good sign. And, uh, uh, you know, going back to <clears throat> some of the messages I've, I've collected over the last week or so, now we're hearing from guys who are starting to set official visits mm-hmm. in Ju- in the month of June. And I'm thinking, man, let's let's get through the first week of spring ball, you know, <laughs> yeah. before that young. But anyway, a couple of names there, Jacaden Ferguson, another wide receiver, 2025 class, tells me he'll be uh, checking out Arkansas in June. 
kid out of Fort Bend Marshall down in Missouri City, Texas, and another high school that you know we've seen a lot of traction there. So uh, Cameron Powell, big time offer list there out of McKinney, Texas North, another wide receiver. Jarkobi Hobson, who returned to Arkansas last month for a unofficial junior day visit. He's a four-star athlete. We're calling Jarkobi a uh, linebacker out of Lake Cormorant, Mississippi. He's visited twice now, so he's planning on coming back in June for another official. And then I'll uh, I'll spitball this one here. Dion DeBlanc, 2025 wide receiver out of North Shore High School, another powerhouse down in Houston. Um, you know, what is that? Seven, eight names there, just wide yeah. receivers off the cuff. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. So, been impressed by these uh, uh, new coaches so far. Of course, that doesn't mean anything till December, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can talk about visits. We've seen coaches come and go who could, you know, they could get visits with the best of them. But come December, where's the signature, right? So, yeah. uh, we won't know for another ten months or so how this thing shakes out, but. Um, that's kind of where it's at so far, man. Danny West joining us. Again, you can follow Danny at Danny West 24-7 on Twitter. Danny, you're almost up to 50,000 Twitter followers, right? Am I? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I'm sneaking up on it. Yeah, you know you're close to 50,000. Yeah, I'm checking it right now, 49.7. 49.7, so 300. Small flex. 300 to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but, Another and Danny. One, what, do you, what do you got now? You got like 60 something. I'm over 60, yeah. Yeah, I've been at it just a little bit longer than you. (laughs) Um, But, uh, yeah, if you want to uh, read up on Danny's content, he always links his stuff on Twitter, so it's a good follow. And uh, sign up for a VIP subscription to read the content at Hog Sports. Just $1 right now for your first month at HAWGsports.com. Or you can sign up for 30% off for your first year. Two great ways to sign up. Hey, Danny, I wanted to look at this um, 2025 recruiting class. Okay. Obviously, we know – you know, April, we start seeing some commitments flow in. We saw some of the highest ranked re- commits for Arkansas last year uh, come in in April, um, June, July, big months. Yeah. Arkansas has got five commitments right now, uh, which is – it's crazy to say this. This is a third of the number of commitments that they had for for last year. Um, mm-hmm. Is there is there anybody that you think might be close to committing as far as high school recruits for that class? You know um... – Right off the top, you would always start in state. I mean, you got guys like uh, Montario Elston mm-hmm. um, or uh, Omari and Robinson, the same high school down there, Park View. I mean, it, just nobody right on the tip of my tongue that might be super close. But you mentioned that number five, you know, five commitments right now. I think that's uh, about fourth or fifth in the SEC. I've got it written down here. All right. So only four SEC teams have more than five right now. We're talking. Oklahoma, LSU, Auburn, and Tennessee, mm-hmm. uh, and Arkansas and Georgia and Texas are, are all tied with five right now. So five is a pretty big number for February, where we had 26. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, at this point last year, they only had one guy, mm-hmm. Kavion Henderson, because if you'll remember, Braylon, uh, he came off the, the prior October, he decommitted and didn't jump back in the boat until July. So only, you know, I mean, you're plus four right now from a number standpoint. That's a pretty good start. And it's it's notable to me because it's something I, I told myself I'm going to try to track and follow with this particular class because, I mean, you've seen it time and time again. You get past that late July cookout uh, going into the first week of uh, fall camp, Arkansas is pretty much done recruiting besides yeah. maybe three or four spots. And I'm curious, Trey, is that is that theme going to, uphold this year because uh, i mean well, let's not try to deny it you know there has been some hot seat talk uh, of course coming off a of four and eight mm-hmm. season last year so i'm curious can they fill up that fast or is there going to be you know some hesitancy on the recruits part uh, that's that's a, something i'm just trying to follow but to jump out to five already is a is a pretty surprising number honestly yeah, it is. And a couple of four-star commitments, obviously, in Carius Kern, who we've talked about recently. Uh, Jamarian Parker out of St. Louis, uh, four-star. It's tough to hold Parker, but, man, if they could, that'd be, yeah. a, that'd be quite a double up for Jimmy. Um, yeah. You're talking about Jimmy, of course. He's, he seems uh, like a popular candidate for a lot of jobs lately, but mm-hmm. good for Arkansas that he's sticking around for a little bit longer. And 
I tell people all the time, there's not a better man or really a better recruiter on campus right now. He's one of the best I've ever dealt with. And, uh, you know, I know people look at last year's running back production, this and that. Mm-hmm. I, I just kind of throw all that away, man, because of the offensive line situation. Jimmy Smith is one of the best I've seen. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And uh, so Arkansas has got those two four-star commitments. They've also got Evan Noel. Is it Noel or Noel? Noel. Noel. Evan Noel, Noel, who is Cole's so kicking Noel. number number two ranked kicker in the country on Cole's kicking. So we don't generally rank kickers four stars, sure. but uh, if they did, then then he would be a four star. He would be maybe a five star. But uh, yeah, yeah. Cole's kicking ranks him number two kicker in the country, and then Grayson Wilson's on board, who's your quarterback commitment for the class, and then uh, Mark Allen Batten, another running back who may be a running back slash athlete, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. I think they're going to start him out at running back, but you know, uh, you watch his film. There's a lot you can do. Put him out, uh, flank him out, and bring him in motion. Just you know, kind of the old. Uh, you remember Percy Harvin, what yes. Florida used to do with that guy, Mr. Utility Guy. So mm. I think there's some some things. Uh, you know, we saw him do that with TJ a little bit. TJ Hammonds didn't always go great for TJ, but at times it did. You know, I think he kind of fits into that mold. The kid could fly 5'10", 180. I, I would suspect he's uh, only going to get bigger and stronger, you know, after he gets on campus. But, yeah, um, to answer your question, I, I think he starts out at running back. Danny, this is a good-looking in-state crop, too. I mean, it is having a good recruiting class always starts with that. It would be – I mean, they had a good class last year inside the state, but, like, it would really be unfortunate, you know. I mean, I'm not saying it would be unfortunate. It's just like if something goes wrong this season and, you know, Pittman is, is an, ended up getting retained and then you have to have a transition year when you have a good yeah. recruiting class, you know. It's just like the timing of all that kind of stuff. But – yeah, we'll see. I mean, um, what, are, what are your thoughts on this in-state crew? Yeah, a strong class. Of course, for me, it starts with Carius. I think he's not only the best player in the state, I think he's one of the best players I've covered from the state of Arkansas. And, uh, you know, he, he's deserving of that fourth star, top 247. I've told people I think he may be a little bit under, not a little bit. I think he's one of the top 100 in the country. Either side of the ball, Trey. I'm fascinated by the dude, and, you know, I, I can't say enough good things about him. But you get past that, you could make a strong case for Robinson down at Parkview. Omarion's got an offer list that rivals just about anybody. Grayson Wilson, when you think about what he did going to San Antonio last month and uh, putting on a show, I think he's got plenty of room to keep moving up the quarterback rankings, potential four-star there. Um, we've seen what happens with, with Marcus Wimberly coming off the commitment list. Sounds like Oklahoma is going to be really tough to beat right now. But, uh, you know, we all know those names. But when you get past that first, I don't know, five or six guys, now you're talking about Braden Walton down at Ashdown, which we know just produces Razorbacks, kind of like mm-hmm. Warren, you know. So uh, another kid over at at Warren High School that I think has a chance to uh, keep climbing. Antonio Jordan, 6'4", 210 wide receiver. Synonymous, ain't it? Wide receiver in mm-hmm. Warren. Uh, anytime you hear that, look out. And then there's another wide receiver at Prescott, Dwayne White, 6'4", 185. And, um, you know, I think he and Walton both are probably going to be guys who eventually they're going to go on a run and pick up your Power 5, Power 4 type offers. And um, I think they're both going to be in that, that category of bring them to camp, make them prove it, see what they run like. They both got great speed, great catch radius, all the things you're looking for. But I think both of those guys could really help themselves in June with all the camp dates coming up. And um, that's before you even talk about Cash Archer, you know, one of the top sack producers in the country last year, not just the state. Now he makes the move from defensive end to a stand-up linebacker position. Really intrigued by that move. He tells me he's settling into it a little bit, still getting stronger. I think he put 315 on power clean the other day and uh, just blew it up. Yeah, uh, and that's this like is a me. Two- yeah, it sounds a lot like you. <laughs> about, about 215, putting up 315 on PC. <laughs> there you go. Sharing a yellow jacket string. That's right. But, uh, yeah, uh, overall, Trey, uh, it's a solid class. Uh, you know, I mentioned a couple of guys there who may be camp types, but um, overall, a really good class. And, I think Arkansas is going to be in pretty good shape with most of them. I think Arkansas is one of those states that kind of gets spoiled a little bit. Uh, you know, you're used to seeing 
let's say if they offer 10 guys, you're, you're used to getting about eight of them at mm-hmm. least. And we've seen them go 10 for 10. I've seen them go nine for nine in some years. But, you know, you have a year like last year where you let a couple get away, especially to go into Missouri, that really stings. But mm-hmm. uh, I say all that to say this. You look at Missouri's top 12 in-state products last year, Missouri only got one of them. So it can always be worse. Yeah. <laughs> you know, imagine watching 11 of your top 12 leave the state of Arkansas, mm-hmm. how fast people would get fired. Yeah. <laughs> Undoubtedly. It's wild. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of that, Ethan Malone asked, uh, what's Arkansas's record if they play that weak ass Missouri schedule? <laughs> well, Missouri had a pretty soft schedule last year, but Arkansas wouldn't have gone eleven and two with it like they no, did. No, they wouldn't have. So um Missouri gets credit for doing what they did. They were salty. But, yeah. Um we got a couple other here, Danny, if you wanna uh yeah, so here sure. this is from Carson Bryan. He says, What what are the chances uh, the move, they moved the SEC tournament to Globe Life, probably unlikely. But what do you think about a uh, baseball uh, series in Arlington this weekend? Well, I, I think you got the front page picture there, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> With Hagen. Dude, it was one of the most impressive. Uh, you know, I sound like anybody that watched the game. One of the most impressive things I've ever seen. I couldn't believe my eyes, but. Uh, hey, Friday night, baseball's a little bit tricky now. I remember my days of covering it. And, I, man, about seven games into a new season, I'd say crown them. You know, Arkansas is going to win it all this year, and that's kind of the feeling I had Friday night. That was big boy baseball, man. It kind of felt like late nights in the middle of June, you know, mm-hmm. in Omaha. I mean, it was, it was a big-time win, but I think the offense will, will – it'll come around. We've seen Arkansas go to some of these showcases in the past, you know, that, that 2018 team that did so well and came up just one play shy. Mm-hmm. I remember them going out west. They lost to teams like Cal Poly, San Diego, really early in the year. Uh, Stanford shut them out 5 nothing one year. Uh, the COVID year that everybody forgets about, they went 0-3 down in Houston against Oklahoma, Baylor, and Texas. It just couldn't get it going offensively. But, you know, there's a couple of guys in that lineup that I think could. Uh, they show flashes at times. They could completely change that lineup we're mm-hmm. talking jason jones and, and uh, uh i can't pronounce the young man's name but Aloy. yeah um, and you can just see it at times yeah and um you know I, the pitching to me is where it's at right now if they can just stay healthy this mm-hmm. is the best uh, chance they've got in terms of pitching to go up to omaha we've seen them run out of pitchers uh, a few times up there but if they can just get there this year i think the offense comes on we're talking seven games in. Kendall Diggs hadn't hit one out yet. I mean, it's going to come. Yeah. So uh, I'm just about ready to crown them already. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> Billy Harper points tell. out that I, I may have misspoke. I may have actually said that Arkansas lost to Oregon State, but I, I meant Oklahoma State, obviously. Um, yeah, well, don't I was just let it happen running. again. <laughs> well, I will not. <laughs> uh, let's see. Mm, what else we got? Uh after watching Arkansas baseball over the weekend, we get the bats going. This is it going to be scary? Yes. Um, Corey Mitchell says, Wild caught Trey and alive. Shout out to Moreno Valley, California via Pine Bluff. And I was about to say the same thing. Yeah. Let's see what else. Uh, Big Man Ross says, Hey, I caught a lice. Nice. He meant to say live. <laughs> Did not catch a lice, I would imagine. Yeah, I remember those days too. <laughs> <laughs> I think we I think we pretty much got it on all the live That's chat it. stuff. So, um, gotcha. and Google Chrome is still just spinning like I knew you would. Yeah, like I knew you would. Hey, yeah. I got one more name for you if it yeah. helps. Yeah, let's do it. I uh, just heard from this one a little while ago. Just going to throw them out there real quick. Rashad Bradley is a six four, two hundred and fifty five defensive lineman down at EMCC East Mississippi Community College. Mm-hmm. He was offered by Coach Deke Adams about four days ago. Just heard from Rashad, and uh, he told me he will be taking a visit at Arkansas, trying to stamp down a hard date right now. But he's going to be a December grad. He'll have two years left, originally out of Lake City, Florida, Columbia High School. And um, that's pretty much all I've got for you on that. But just kind of another 2025 defensive lineman to maybe keep your eye on, especially with him saying that he's planning on getting to campus pretty soon. That's a relatively short trip. And uh, be on the lookout for Rashad. Could be a JUCO name that we're talking about for a little while. 
Okay. We don't talk a lot about a lot of junior college names. No, not anymore. anymore. They yeah. they need it. Yeah. Used to not used to live on the, on the junior college ranks. That's right. right. All right, Danny. Appreciate you, man. You got it, man. See All you. right, everybody. That's Danny West. Again, one time, one more time, follow him at Danny West 24-7, Hog Sports Recruiting Analyst, if you haven't done so already. My man's almost to 50,000 Twitter followers, so uh, help him get there. And, of course, sign up at hogsports.com. Just $1 right now, H-A-W-G sports.com. You know you're going to want our spring football coverage in addition to all the stuff that's coming down the pipe in Razorback football recruiting, a lot of basketball offseason stuff coming up, hopefully maybe a little bit of postseason stuff, whether it's just the NIT or maybe making a run in the SEC tournament or whatever. Um, obviously, NCAA tournament feels like a dramatic long shot uh, and has for a while now. But uh, a, lot of, a lot of great coverage. Baseball, of course, with J- Jackson McAfee. Basketball with Connor Goodson, all hands on deck for football, football recruiting, all that stuff. So uh, we've got Cody, Cody Calhoun. He wins the day, I guess, watching from Ghana. Uh, shout out, Cody Calhoun. Thanks for watching the show. Thanks to all of you guys for watching the show. Thanks for our subscribers. Thanks for our free users, too. We, we need you guys, too. But uh, appreciate everybody making Hog Sports one of the top websites in the 24-7 Sports Network, and we're covering Arkansas. So so feel certainly lucky to be able to have that distinction and also cover the team that we love to cover. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time. 